Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by The Plain Truth, Jose and Arwin. Good to have you all. See how I snuck in there right at the right yeah. time? Yeah, you got the first, first name in, even though you haven't been here. <laughs> Good to have you, Travis. How you doing, Jose? How you doing, Arwin? We all live in a yellow submarine. Scurvy's for everybody! Arr! <laughs> How about you, Arwin? You good? Yeah, sure. So, before the show started, we were discussing Jose and his new camera, which you'll hopefully get sometime uh, this week. But uh, despite the lack of a P900, any signs of curvature? No, nope, not. not yet. No? Any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety, quite specifically, Arwin? Yeah. No. No. Uh, what's that? Earth turn. Oh. This is the easiest point where you can discern where a begging the question fallacy is when you start talking about stars and stuff like that, you know? Yes, yeah, really got to assume emotion, are. Though. Absolutely. Any evidence of that Earth radius? Nope. Nope. No, no evidence of R. What about gas pressure without a container? Oh, no. They keep proposing that pressure gradient things, but first of all, where is the air we breathe comes from? We, we, need, we need a pressurized system, you know. Don't, don't talk about the gradients. Let's talk about the pressure first, and then we talk about gradients. Right. Yeah, absolutely correct. If you're going to have a gas pressure gradient, you must first have gas pressure. So, where do you get the gas pressure without a container? Okay. Any evidence of the distance ah. to the sun? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. I have oh, speculated. There's a late, late comer. Go, Arwen, go. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe uh, if we go from the Einsteinian gravity perspective, uh, if there are, like, gravity fields, then maybe you could imagine that gravity, uh, when it concerns matter, is like a magnetic field and it has different types of fields of the gravity effect over distances. So if you assume that that could happen, then maybe uh, at the upper layer of the Earth, the gravity is having this very strong barrier that is so strong that it can actually be enough to repel gas in such a fashion that it could keep it uh, yeah, be, going beyond a certain line. And other objects that would go through this gravity barrier, which is stronger than on the rest of the Earth, basically, yeah, could perhaps go through it very roughly as being smacked around. It's a lovely story. Mm. Very nice. Yeah, can you start back at the part where there was a presupposition? Go back <laughs> to that part. Yeah, yeah, to the mind of God for the super chat. Thank you very much. So what about gravity then? Is there actually any scientific evidence of gravity? Nope. Yeah, no. Because no, they want to yeah, throw this no. they want to throw this gravity into also into the pressurized system. They want to just mix all these pre presuppositions together one to another. So it's a bullshit on top of a bullshit. Sorry about that. Fair enough. What about a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the center of that presupposed spherical earth? Any signs of that? Sure, why not? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> any, yeah. any actual evidence, though? 
it's in it's in uh, school textbooks, you know, as a very colorful layered ball earth. So it must be true, right? Nah. What well, it must be true if the teacher at school? Well, I would say yes. It must be true if you're to teach it at a school. So I would say your assertion's anything. correct, but the assertion of a molten iron core, no. To be fair, Nathan, they are really beautiful drawings. Oh, they're lovely illustrations, are we? Now? I love an illustration I as part really of my love uh, paradigm. I really love them almost nostalgic nostalgically. Like in nah. Encyclopedia, that the, those things were always the first that I would look up. Beautiful. Yes. Indeed. Yeah, that's what you want. A nice painting to give you your world view and your religion. Always look at the pictures first. Absolutely. Text is boring. It's all too <laughs> sciencey. Damn those words. Yeah. Cool. Well, that concludes the housekeeping. Awesome. No Anthony Riley today. Busy doing, uh, he's busy doing homework, believe it or not. Yeah, I saw Ranti put a new video, but I haven't watched it yet. I'm, I'm being lazy, I'm catching up. Yeah, I haven't seen any of Ranti's videos over the weekend. There's a few people in the chat saying that he debunked me. And uh, yeah, I was chatting with Ranti last night at great length, compiling various uh, bits of information that he got from his 100 meter run which as i say i didn't actually see the video for it but he showed me the end results and uh, it was exactly as expected half the ring was missing now he's got a massive aperture on his camera that he used and i said to him why didn't you just use the camera phone you know the the limitation of the apertures what what gives you your diffraction limit so if you're going to use a massive massive aperture on the p1000 it's going to be very difficult to get this effect because you've got zoom <laughs> you know that's what's that's the diffraction limit that's yeah. what dictates. unless you use a massive distance well, he didn't. He used 100 meters. Hey, physics warrior. Hey, all. Hey, Nathan. Good to have you. So, yeah, Thanks. I said you could have just done this in about 10 meters with your camera phone, and it would have been far easier. Um, but yeah, that's these. Are the you've got three aspects as far as I'm concerned. So I'll preface the first by saying, on a clear day, so assuming that you can see as much as you can see, there's no atmospheric interference. On a clear day, there's only two things that limit how much things will disappear from the bottom up. One how much zoom you've got. That would be the diffraction limit of the camera, purely dictated by the aperture size. Hey, Earth Flattener, good to have you. Hello. Hi. So that's point one, the aperture size. In Ranty's case, massive. But we'll move past that quickly and go on to the bit that I like to focus on, which is the viewing angle. The limitation of the viewing angle is what causes things to disappear from the bottom up. There will be an angle to the bottom of stuff that reduces it to the degree that it is no longer resolvable. It is too small to see by virtue of its limited angle. Hello, Mark Doxy, good to have you. Hello, folks. Hello, hey. nice new avatar. What's that then? Let's have a little look. That, that, that's Peyton here. Yeah, very nice. I think I've seen that picture before. Nice though. Yeah, if you look at the horizon, it's just dead flat. Your work, Mark, the stuff that you send on Skype, is beautiful. I mean, it's truly, Thank you. truly beautiful photography. It gives me goosebumps just talking about it. Hey, Flat Earth Vegan Goy. Hey. Are you being paid to be here? Uh. Come on, fess up. Shame the devil. No? That's not a no, I'm here. <laughs> I didn't hear a no. <laughs> no? Who are you talking to me? Yeah, I was just joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just discovered the block thing on the... I didn't know we could block people. It's really much more pleasant over there now, so I enjoy that. Yeah, you can block people in the chat. You can report them in the chat. For the benefit yeah. of the audience, I'll show you what we're talking about, just because whenever anyone used to discuss this, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. So on the chat, there's these three little dots, and if you click on them, you've got all sorts of things that you can do to various participants in the chat. It is a free-for-all. While I do do a little bit of moderation in there, if someone's pissing you off, just block them. Sure. And, and I want to add to this, Nathan, there is such thing as a clear day. There are clear days. Yep. But the bowlers say there is never a clear day. 
And I said, like, how come? You know, like, really? No, there are clear days they say no. This is bullshit. Hello, B500? Your new guest? No, I don't think so. Ah. Uh, Took my eyes off the screen for a minute and you're like, hello? <laughs> Yeah, there are some things when you look at the distance in the horizon and you see the inferior mirage and the mirroring effects and this compression really bad, just, you can see it with your own eyes. That's not a very clear day. All the days you just see crystal clear, the, the line, the horizon, you don't see any mirroring effects on the boats, that's a clear day. They say, no, that's not a clear day. Why? Because you've got the diffraction limit of the camera visible. I guess, yeah. All oh, right. Well, that's becoming more and more clear as time goes by, so unlucky. We knew that the calculator had hijacked perspective, but now we're figuring out what actually happens when you look out in the distance. And the reality is you have a very limited angle to anything below the midpoint of the aperture that you're looking through. So first you work out what the angular resolution of the equipment or eye that you are using is, from there, you can calculate what the angle of attack is, and you can pretty much work out what you will be missing from the bottom up based on the angle of view to that item. The more limited the angle, and that gets more limited with distance, shock horror, the more likely you will lose it from the bottom up. It is, um, what's the word? This is a, this is a fact of life. There is no way around it. Every single time you look at anything in the distance, you have angles involved and the most limited angle to whatever it is you see in the distance will dictate that it will disappear from bottom up because you cannot resolve the information in that angle. If you are talking about a camera and you look into the distance and you see something that is below the midpoint of that camera, it will be within a limited frame of reference in terms of its angle. And the lower you go, the smaller that angle becomes. Therefore, at a given point, that angle will only be able to resolve a couple of pixels. Now that might be a foot, it might be a millimeter. It makes no difference, it always happens. The angle of view will always decrease towards the bottom of things. That's just a fact. You can't get around it. We don't have one straight line in an orthographic view between us, the observer, and the target. We have an angle of view to whatever it is we're looking at. And that angle is limited from the midpoint down and gets more limited the further down you go. Till eventually, the thing is too small to resolve. And what do you know? That means it disappears. Doesn't mean there's a curve. It means that that's the angle of attack limiting your view and your ability to resolve something at that angle. That's all it is. And I, I cannot conceive when they say the, the stuff start disappearing. If, you, if I'm a six foot high person standing on the beach, getting my feet wet i'm standing on the beach and stuff starting getting disappear at six miles start getting disappeared from the from the bottom up i call that bullshit because i have cut observations to five six and seven miles that's double the, the three miles and i can see down to the bottom you know ha, ha, three miles disappearing no i call i call bs to that Yeah, I mean, like I said, the first thing you need to figure out is what the diffraction limit is of your camera. And by diffraction limit, as I've said a few times, because a few people say, well, what's happening out on the surface at the distance that you're looking at is the diffraction. No, not at all. Diffraction is at the camera end and is dictated or limited, depending on which way you're looking at it, by the aperture. That's what gives you the amount that you can resolve at a given distance, how much zoom you have. So the angular resolution limit, as it was formerly known, is actually the diffraction limit. That's what dictates how far you can see, how much zoom you have in simple terms. But the angle of view is what will cause the limitation of things from bottom up to disappear. The more limited the angle, the less you can resolve. It's as simple as that. The further things get away, the more limited their angle becomes, increasing the likelihood, the further you back away from it, that it's gonna to start to vanish. And eventually it will vanish. Prior to it vanishing, it will distort, it will stretch. And then it'll go. Yes, indeed. Uh, hey, Nathan, fake Arwen is in chat. You'll block. Which you one's block the fake one? one? <laughs> is it, did it, what is, tell me something he said, Arwen. It's just it. 
Fake Arwin in chat, he stole all my content. Fake Arwin stole all my videos. <laughs> is that the one? Is that the fake one? He, I'm not saying anything, it's all him. Oh, okay. Well, it's just. There you go. Oh, yes, that's the fake one. Bye bye, fake Arwin. Oh, I didn't know he was a fake. <laughs> Have you been chatting with the fake Arwin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. People say, Why were you so rude to me in whoever Roxanne's chat? And I'm like, Who's Roxanne? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've not been in anybody's chat. See, I, I post a little a link over in the side there. Uh, it's kind of interesting, too. You probably talked about it before, but uh, the Russians have only been able to drill down to about 12,000 meters, and that's it. They hit rock bottom, and no one's ever been able to ever dig any farther than that. I find that I'm surprised they can't get to their molten core. Indeed. Super deep borehole. I haven't even scratched the surface of Earth, bro. Nobody has. Yeah, Anthony likes to use that example as well because the seismology was wrong. What they predicted with the seismology assessment of that site was that it would get more dense. And it didn't. It got less dense. Erwin, can you leave it? What? The, the trolls constantly adding themselves? But clearly it's me. That's Earth Flatner that does that, Erwin. We've explained this at least twice. Oh. And I put it into the back chat every day that I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, and sir, only just woken up clearly. It Where's make, Anthony? It makes it really hard to snipe out people. Ulti Tom yeah. Tom. Anthony's doing a bit of homework. So he's actually working on his, um, what do you be called? What's it called? A dissertation, I suppose. Yeah, he's working, yeah, yeah, on, he's working on, on his project. Yeah. Yep. Busy, busy bee. Did chat to him this morning. He's like, "Look, I'm working on this," <laughs> and I could hear his uh, his better half in the background going, "You need to be working." <laughs> and I'm like, "I just want to ask you about this. <laughs> what Hello? shape is the world? How are you doing?" Hello, you right? Very well. How are you doing? Yeah, all good, all good, all good. So, yeah, so Anthony's not going to be here today. So no talk about floating eggs then. <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> no cherry tomatoes. Oh yeah, cherry tomatoes. Oh god. And they're all so Please. happy. Yeah. No. They're so happy. The reification fallacy, Owen. You can't have a happy cherry tomato. Yeah, yes, he brings it up all the time. Arwin knows that. He's not stupid. <laughs> hey doing Event Horizon. So you're new. He was smacking his skateboard for the mute. What, yeah, we didn't hear you, by the way, Event Horizon. I don't know if your mic shagged. What, what, uh, what side of the fence do you sit? What shape is the world? Oh, um, definitely flat. <laughs> definitely you're on definitely the flat, flat side. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Wouldn't have any other way, mate. That's an interesting what? question. Arwin, what side of the fence do you sit on? Is it flat? Is it a globe? What do you think? Well, the Earth definitely seems to be geometrically flat, straight, and other than that, yeah, well, with that fact, it can't really be a globe. So, whatever it is, maybe the land masses, uh, uh, when all put together, will actually suggest a globe, but it's physically not that, so then spatial anomalies could be drafted in to explain it in another fashion that can actually include physical flatness. And that's where you get the rectangular looping model for starters. Does that answer your question, Jose? He answers my question, yeah. In general, he, he, it's flat, you know, yeah. He cannot be a globe, so I'll take that as a flat. Yes. Did you did you doubt Arwen's position? No, no. Uh, I, I was pretty sure I just wanted to, 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 you know, stamp it on like, all right, so he's not a glober, he's a flutter, okay? 
Yeah, I went to Flatty. <laughs> I'm just speaking with you guys. <laughs> you, you're, you're just right, teasing. Arwen. You're just teasing yeah. us. Yeah, I like I like this in Arwen a little bit. I, I, I like trolling Arwen a little bit. It's just appreciation, you know. You got to smile a little bit, Arwen, a little more. Arwen gets more than he, he deserves. Just flicking through his spell book to curse really? you. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm wearing my 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 team four hat today, so I think it's gonna slip out of me whatever curse he throw at me. I wouldn't worry. He needs he needs a real human hair for that voodoo doll. He'll he'll get it one day. <laughs> um, Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, Event Horizon, good to hear you. Hey, Dan, I thought I'd just jump in quickly whilst there was a break. So I'm here, just going to put myself on mute. I'll be back in a second, all right? There is. Um, I just wanted to bring up a point about um, the moon landings. And when I've seen quite a few people get stumped when they say, oh, well, we put something on the moon and you can shine, shine a laser at it and it reflects back. Um, but then I was looking on the Glover's wiki and um, I'm not sure if I can present myself because my uh, PC mic is not working on my iPad right now. Um, let me see if I can put the camera on and then show you my screen, if that's all right. Yeah, go oh, ahead. One second. But basically, the thing is, um, it says here on the wiki that they've been shooting lasers and reflecting beams off the moon since 1962, before they even went to the moon. Yeah, I've heard correct. loads of people get stumped on that. Yeah, that's one of the one of the explanations. Personally, I prefer to debunk the medium and just ask how we have gas pressure here on Earth if we're supposedly in a vacuum. But that aside, yeah, absolutely, they were bouncing stuff off the moon before they dropped the reflectors on the Apollo missions. Allegedly dropped something in the Apollo missions. Mm -hmm. Like the waving flag. Why aren't there any pictures of this device they dropped off? Oh, there are there are pictures of the reflectors. Really? Yeah. Just Google it, you'll find pictures and images of the reflectors. From the original footage. Yeah, they look like something out of a nineteen seventies uh set. Like made out of egg cups. Stanley Kubrick special. Yeah, they do. It looks like a set designer would make them. Cool. It's funny that he did uh, two thousand one a space odyssey the year before the so called moon launch. Coincidence? Oh, did we just get this year the Man, uh, man on the Moon movie? What is, well, how is it called? First and Man. Whatever. Yep, yep. So we get the movie today. Are we going to see a moon landing this year? Huh. Okay, your screen's presented. Uh... Yeah, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it properly, but next time I'm, my mic's broken on my PC. So, um, But yeah, this is basically the wiki, and it basically shows it right here. Uh, since 1962 they've been doing that so please if people ever bring up the moon landings and say that it was legit because of those things sitting on the moon just please bring them to this page and debunk them quickly That's yeah all. <laughs> one of the um, videos I made quite some time ago about Brian Cox was when he went to the observatory that actually fires the laser at these reflectors and then a little computer says yeah we got two or three photons back um, and he didn't understand the point of going there and he had to have the producer explain it to him in no uncertain terms he came across as incredibly stupid did brian cox to be perfectly honest but the thing the thing that i found the most interesting was how much this you know professor was being led by the director about what he was going to say and the importance of it it's like well surely you're the professor you know, why is it a, a TV producer's having to lead you about what's being said and the reasons for it being said? And indeed, what the thing even does and where they were even going. He didn't know anything. Like, literally, he knew nothing. It was amazing. And this is a poster child for the heliocentric religion. Dr. Brian Cox. Call him Priest uh, Brian Cox. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> heliocentric priest. Absolutely. He's not a scientist, that's for sure. Yeah. But he maybe yeah. also be learning these things not out of actual interest, but just out of acting. So he just learns routines in how to respond. I mean, if and that's into, why he can't really improvise. That could be an explanation. If you look into some of the stories about when he was in D-Ream, he was the annoying little twat that used to get gaffer taped to the gantry, the lighting <laughs> gantry. That's what they used to do to him. 
So, you know, from an annoying little twat in a crap band to Dr. Brian Cox, you know, telling us all about how the universe works and walking around CERN. Yeah, I can't, I can't stand him. I can't stand him. I can't stomach him at all. I just can't stand him. This is so disingenuous, just like a total liar. Do you know what I mean? Just lies through his teeth. Hey, music. The panel is now full, so if you do want to join, just mention it in the chat. If you've got some specific point that you want to mention, and uh, I'll ask one of our guests to leave. Flattener, I'd be happy to go to the trade spots with a baller. I know, maybe not. We're all good. I vote for Mark Doxy to leave. I'm not asking anybody oh. to leave. If somebody in the chat left. actually asks, I if, like if somebody Flatter, asks. Flatter, Steak, and Goy left, so... <laughs> Do not, uh, if you see a CGI Ranty joining, please kick him spontaneously because now CGI Ranty is a suck from Ranty, but then it's a suck of CGI Ranty. So there's two CGI Rantys, a fake <laughs> CGI Ranty. So there's a CGI <laughs> Ranty suck. So it's so meta. That's yeah. bonkers. Let's go back to the moon landing and James Bond. Did, did, does anybody remember the film? Diamonds are forever. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> when they chase him in <laughs> slow motion and in character. <laughs> That's brilliant. It had, it had nothing to do with the plot of the film, but they had this mock-up of the moon landing. It was a real, I don't know, it was satire, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. The moon landing is a, a total hoax. And that was in 1972, just after the, the, the moon landings had finished. Or it... they were already planning to make a movie about the actual event. <laughs> Did you see the film, Arwen? Did you see Diamonds Are Forever? Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just playing devil's yeah. advocate for a moment. It's a very young okay, Sean okay. Connery. But there's bound to be a lot more movies made about this because it's a lot easier than actually doing it, you know? So. But the, everybody missed the, the point in 1972 when... Diamonds Are Forever was the current film. You know, it was actually out, and people were going to watch it. They missed the satire or the dig at Apollo that whoever was producing James Bond at the time was saying that the whole thing was a hoax. Of course. They were still enchanted by the glory being that special country. So I've just got to, hey, just got to point, sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to point the comical nature of the chat at the moment. So you've got CGI Ranty going, yeah, he's going to have his account removed. It's like, CGI Ranty, you're a take on Ranty? Hello? <laughs> Why are you on your high horse about someone cloning yeah, you? Yeah, funny. <laughs> it's just so... It just so boggles the mind. To describe that to a third it party is. would be an iron impossible. <laughs> No, there's sorry, Mark, why, sorry. There's a fake political hillbilly in chat, by the way. That's why this this uh, show is, is so amazing, because he had created so, so much content and ideas. Right, um, I'm going to drop out because I've got to work on a video that I'm going to be releasing either later on tonight or tomorrow. So um, if anyone else wants to join, um, I'm sure I'll be able to free up a spot. I'm just going to sit here until, so just let me know, give me a shout and I'll drop out. Absolute pleasure having you. You led the conversation beautifully. Thank you very much for joining. If you want to promote <laughs> no your video... I'll be on soon anyway. I'll be back soon. Yeah, well, <laughs> like right, I say, if, uh, if you want to plug your video, rejoin. I'll even post it in the chat for you. Well, I've got one video up. It's only like about two minutes long. You can play it now. Oh, I, I, I actually don't because it's your show. But um, yeah, when I, when I um, sort out this video later, I will let you know. I'll probably be on tomorrow. Cool. Thank you very much for joining. Right. It was nice to meet Take you. Take care. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care, buddy. Bye. Bye. So, what are we going to talk about next? I was quite interested gonna... talking about the moon landings. That was a good subject. So, they say there's no need to take a 4K footage. Not, not really a 4K, but a 1080, a high-quality footage from Earth to the moon, maybe do a little orbit in the moon and come back with 4K with throwing cameras everywhere. They say there's no need for that. And then in the other breath, they say, oh, no, but he's, we're still working on the, 
on the you know on the machinery to throw it out there without getting damaged by the Van Allen belts and all this BS. I said, yeah, but you sent a bunch in the six, late 60s and early 70s. They said, yeah, but it's different technology. So they cannot use the old rocket and uh, old technology. Build an old rocket with an analog, which is going to cost you a handful of millions of dollars to build it and put a bunch of 4K cameras around it and, and give the people that because people give NASA the money. They should give us at least some good footage from the Earth to the moon and back, you know. Put hundreds of hours of footage. We will see it all. They say there's no need for that. Yeah, we'll just fly around Earth over and over and over again and then cut the stream when it's inappropriate. Yeah, I was going to say, we have got great images, haven't we? We've got loads of CGI from the ISS, but loads of pretty pictures from an unprovable medium. Yeah, I, I just see it as a complete joke. I mean, I still see, obviously, there's a lot of flat earthers who take great pride in debunking the ISS. It's just a joke. You know, I always recommend the same YouTuber. Go to Dilly Gill's channel and just watch how NASA are on the cutting edge of cinematography and always have been. Yeah, in the last show, Jeronism had a few days ago with Iro Landushi. It was the part two. And they talk about this a lot, a big part of the show. And Iru presented a bunch of kind of the same videos we've seen <laughs> debunking the ISS because it's so BS on the augmented reality and the wires and all this stuff. But he breaks it down really good. So it's a recommended video for people that want to talk about this debunking yeah, the ISS and space. Absolutely. So I echo that. Iru, Iru Landucci basically explained how 50K, not a huge amount of money, will get you real time processing with green screen technology. So he showed this guy, um, and initially he's just on the back of a green screen. Then he interacts with certain pieces of set furniture, like a chair, that's actually there. But then he moves to the other side of the set and he just sits on a green box, like you'd see in a Hollywood studio. And he's in a full apartment with a sofa and he's interacting with the green screen. This is 50 grand's worth of stuff. It's not like it's mega millions, not at all. Um, just, just incredible. But very very realistic and even at one stage Jaron had to ask him well which bits of this is real and which bits are green screen and Ira was like it's all green screen the only thing real here is the guy yeah well I know that was amazing here and Ira knows about this because he worked in productions in over there in his country or whatever so he's got a background with green screen and this kind of technology so he, he can catch it just with a glance of an eye he said this is CGI and this is real, so yeah, the guy had. I gotta give him credit. Right, welcome back, Mark. Having some issues. Yeah. Said, welcome back, Mark. You having some issues? He's on mute at the moment. He's got a different uh, icon. So no, is that's it him? his new icon. It's yeah. nice. I've seen the photo before, but it's just used it as an icon. Wow, this is riveting. I'm going to do some chat, chat shout outs. Hey, Pedro, good to have you. Howard, nice to see you. Bay. Thanks for being here. Jay, good to see you. Blue Nigger, not a very nice name. Good to see you anyway. That's we got. La Brecker, thanks for being here. M Stone, nice to see you as well. Negator XX, thanks for joining the show. Multi Tom Tom, thanks for being here. Hey Dank, good to see you. Hey Peanuts, nice to see you as well. Hey Donny, hey Daz. That's we got. David Reed, hello. Hey, McKinsey, being in our live chat. Good to see you all. Little the figures. Hello. Hey, Ranty. Hey. Is that really you? It is. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> good to be here. Not Banty dead the then. Curve slayer. Not, not dead then. Is this so the first show? Any curvature? Is this no. the first show? Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. 
I found a lot of inferior barrages though today. We got stuff to show us, Ranty. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> Just Yay. walked in. Yay! Yay. <laughs> it's good to have you here, Ranty. It really is. <laughs> I was chatting at chat. That's what I resorted to. <laughs> hey, Wiz, okay. what's that? What about Bob? Good to have you. Hello, I was wondering if you could discuss maps. That's Stephen Hawkins. Maps and even even uh, Google Earth. What? Sure. Why Don't see why not. An, an, an actual depiction of the Earth be made. Can you respond to a question? Are you or is this a recording? Uh, what's this test at the track? Hello? That people you got a, you got a very poor connection. Um, I've forgotten your name already. You've been on before. What about, Bob? what about Bob? Hello. You got a very poor connection. What about Bob? Yeah, your sound Can is you all me? breaking up. Okay, I'll try a different headset. Just try to rejoin. That, that usually works. Hopefully, you'll rejoin. You're up, Randy. Sorry? You are up. Oh, I'm up. I mean, I don't know. No, it's your turn now. Oh, it's my turn. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, we all want to see your marvelous work, man. <laughs> well, I'm going to release this video in its entirety in a few minutes. So I'll upload it to my channel. Uh, so hopefully it'll just play a little bit and you can, I'll just pan across a tad. Um, but can you see all these, these, this landmass here that seems to be looming? If I play the video, can you see floaty land here? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, all that land is joined up uh, and I've seen it many a time from this location. So, um, all this nonsense about looming, um, and seeing floaty land, it isn't looming or floaty land. It is actually the land. It's just that there's an inferior mirage underneath it. Um, I've filmed these loads of times, this this Welsh Mountains, um, and obviously quite a lot of it is blurred out. You don't see it at all. But the other part of it, you do. And you get this inferior mirage going on. Um, so this video I will be releasing today. So the atmosphere is absolutely blocking off the bottom of these mountains so that you cannot see them. Um, so let's suppose there was a boat um, that you should be able to see near these wind turbines, for instance. You wouldn't see it because the atmosphere would be blocking it. Um, I've got another couple of videos that I might look at this one. Uh, this is zooming into um, the buildings of Barrow, which you guys have seen many a time. But look at this. Oh, yeah, the mirroring is crazy, ridiculous. And the thing is, this is the conditions that the Globers say this is ideal for seeing the curve because it's it was cold air, right? So it wasn't warm. I, mean, I think it was about six degrees this morning when I filmed this. Um, the, the water temperature, I would guess, is around that or maybe less. But there wouldn't be a massive difference between the two. And they would say, oh, yeah, absolute perfect conditions, non-refraction. So everybody watching, this is non-refraction, everybody. This is non-refraction, apparently, according to the globe. Yeah. So you're telling me the air temperature versus the water was very similar to each other? Hey, pause, yes. pause it, pause it. That's, that's the lighthouse. Man, I love your peen 1000. This is fantastic. So That is the lighthouse, yeah. That's the lighthouse. Check out what's underneath it. Yeah, the lighthouse. It's the basement. <laughs> it's the basement. It's the mud flood it. part of the uh, lighthouse. Antipodal lighthouses. Awesome. But what we should see here is, um, like this building here, we know there's more buildings that we've seen in the other stuff, but it's completely blurred out. Now, it's not the ocean that's risen up higher than because I'm actually at the top of the, the sea wall here and it's at low tide so my camera height is about 50 feet above actual sea level at this time so I should be able to see all those buildings all those buildings that I've filmed not from the one foot observation but as the you know I did the control image where we see all the buildings so all the buildings that are in this location are hidden now they're only hidden not hidden by the curvature of the earth not hidden by uh, a wall of water, the hidden by the inferior mirage. 
you know, it's it's so evident in in today's conditions that I mean, everything that I've been saying about the the atmosphere is causing the blockage. This is just another perfect example of that. So when the globe is like I say, they say, oh yeah, cold weather. This is what you need for seeing the globe, right? Well, this is cold weather. No, we don't see the globe. We see blockage because the stuff that we shouldn't see, yeah. Well, so, well, anything, anything that we should see is blocked by this inferior mirage. It's not the curve of the Earth. You guys know this. You've seen this footage many a times. It's Frank the looming. This footage is really good, Randy. Yeah, it's this amazing. Awesome. We also oh, look at that floating happened. city right there. And here we have obviously more more land. So this is land that I've filmed many a time in its entirety, down to the actual, you know, essentially the sea, the sea, and. Uh, what it is, it's floating. It's this this here where my cursor is now is the sky being mirage down and causing a blockage that you can't see the the land anymore. So, rant it, rant it on 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 another day. What would we see here? Um, you would see just land all the way down. I mean, this is what you would see. This uh, I've I've filmed this before. This this um, it's like a, a mast. I have it on another video. Um, and, and you see the land take up, all the way know, down. I know it won't um, be the P1000 footage, but com for comparison, is there any chance you can bring up the old footage where you have caught it? Uh, I'd have to I'd have to search for it and get my uh, three terabyte drive working because at the uh, minute no it's worries. not no working. No, no, I He's going to present it on his own. Uh, hang on. But we have this has been on multiple occasions been presented multiple by Multiple occasions, yeah. 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 And one other thing, I did take a video of the of the boat. Let me just, uh, oh, actually, which one shall I show you? Because it's, I want to get the one that I'm actually, yeah, this will do. But what you actually see here is you see the boat cresting the sky, essentially. It's not actually cresting the water. So when we're looking at the front of the boat, it's not splitting the water, it's splitting the, you know, if you were looking at it, you would say it was splitting the sky because it look, it's not actually on the water as such but the front of it the back of it is because it's all disturbed all the the air but the front part of it hasn't it looks like it's actually floating on on the air and again this is just another example of the of the inferior mirage uh, that's actually in play right now but the boat is moving into that which gives it the appearance that it's actually floating on the sky what what is a, a a distance from you to the boat? Because you know what the path of the trip of the boat, just a ballpark. Uh, from recollection, uh, knowing that this boat takes the same journey every time it goes over to the Isle of Man, it's between six and a half and seven miles away. All right, yeah, it's my, really clear, man, beautiful. Well, my um, Ant, is Ant, can I just ask you a question quickly? Gosh, um, yeah, I was wondering because I'm. In the process of making a video right now and um i wanted to use some of your footage as proof of the flat earth is there any chance i could use that is that okay of course can yeah oh anyone, thank you anyone can all right thank you all right back to back to making my video all right take care lad. see ya yeah, yeah no worries <laughs> all right thanks bye and um, i'll definitely put your name up on there as well so everyone knows it's yours okay right, thanks see you. All right, bye. and link to his channel in your box as well it will do definitely <laughs> oh yeah take care. Yeah, so so this boat isn't, you know, if you take if you just look at it as a if I just pause it and you'll actually see the front of it seems to be cresting in the air and we know that it's not floating, you know, it's it's on the water. And we've said it before, fake waves. Um I think we're getting an idea now that it's the inferior mirage causing these fake waves, these wispy waves that aren't actually the top of the water. The water extends beyond that. You can see a faint horizon behind it, though, or at least I can on my nice big screen. Well, you're seeing it for the first time as I'm actually seeing it because I've, I've literally just walked in and loaded them onto the PC, so I filmed these this morning. I mean, I've seen the other stuff. You've got the sea truck, and as you just rightly pointed out, it's always the same distance, right? Look yep. how big it is. It's just, I don't know, the P1000's ace. <laughs> <laughs> And this is obviously a bit further on. Um, I think I filmed this from the car, so it's a bit unsteady, this one. I mean, the difference is literally, you could, if someone was stood on deck, you could probably make them out with the P1000. You definitely could not with the PU900 at this distance. 
No, it's really clear. Look how clear it, it is. Really clear. So big. It is really clear, isn't it? My goodness. Seven miles, these are. But what's, what, 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 you'll notice something in a minute, Nathan. What do you see there? Oh, wow. That's cool. Oh, what that's something we've not seen before. That's good. Very That's very ace. Good. Quick, let's have another look at that. You'll see some more in a minute. So the bottoms of them, you are actually seeing the mirage. So where I've said it before and asserted it on a white pole, so you've just got to take my word for it that it's refl that it's miraging down upon itself as it squashes through the limited angle. On this, yeah. oh, look at those blades. There we oh, go. isn't that wonderful? Oh, this is epic. You'll see it again in a minute, please. I know what you're gonna. Which ones you're looking for? Because well, listen, doesn't this help? Oh, beautiful! Look at that! Oh, look at that! Beautiful. That is superb. Oh, ranty. I'll tell you one thing: I definitely don't see any curvature anywhere. Yeah. And so that this curvature is disingenuous and dishonest and needs to go to hospital. Can't we talk about the distance from the ship to the first turbine? Um, they're about 11 miles, I think, the first one. Is that right, Ranty? I think so, yeah. Okay, um, so, you, so if you've got, let's just let's just round it down to the ship being 6 miles and the first turbine being 11, that's another 5 miles, I think right? It's, I think yeah. it's a bit less than that. It's probably, it's probably more like 4. I'm sure they're like 10 point something. So yeah, it's probably 4 miles difference, I would guess. But still, a significant difference. And uh, this is bad news for the ballers. Can we not go back and discuss about the floating egg? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. I think this takes priority, Mark. I've got to be honest. Really? You, you like this, do you, Mark? I'll take it I'll from your side. The uh, the, the, no, there's going to be. Hold no. on, I've got to get this in because there's going to be. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's going to be Americans who don't get that sarcasm. That's that's very British humour that Mark just used. And some <laughs> people it. won't understand what he meant by that. So maybe just just dumb it down and clarify it in clear terms rather than sarcastic terms, Mark. Well, we've missed Ranty. It's been distant for a few weeks, and all that the program has been discussing is happy tomatoes and floaty eggs. <laughs> and I'm so glad to see Ranty come back again and give us meat and potatoes, and that's all it is. Not not eggs and tomatoes. It's meat and potatoes, flat Earth proof. I like it. I absolutely, it better, absolutely. This is awesome, Rant, Ranty. Rant, hang on, hang on. Ranty, a big hug to you. You're amazing. Thank you. Yeah, group hug for Ranty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah agreed. Yeah, Pile on. <laughs> that's that's so, a yeah, good title is, for the show, nice. too. Not eggs and tomatoes, but meat and potatoes. A uh, round for scurvy for everybody on me. <laughs> potatoes, not potatoes. No. <laughs> Lemons. Oh, yeah. This is cool. Well, the earth is, smells like a fisherman the earth is obviously and observably well. flat. And well, one thing I want to point, I really do just want to point this out before we go. Is, this is the end of um, Darwin Flynn, and it drops off there. So uh, if this is an inferior feedback. mirage uh, carrying a further on. So we've got inferior mirage carrying further on. Right, that's the blockage. Anything, anything, any land in the distance, any boat that's further away, you wouldn't see it. It would be hidden behind this inferior mirage because it would just be a, a blockage of repeating sky. That's all it would be. It would just look like sky. Except the a... question. Yeah. What is that little thing sticking up there? Is that like a person walking there? Or... No, it's a it's a te it's a telephone mast, I think, or something like that. I've actually evidenced it. Hey, yeah, and that really you? It's about fifty foot high. Hello, boys. Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh yeah. So yeah. so Ranty, go back to the fact that we had the sea truck at the horizon. So if you keep the horizon line and let's just say it's six miles the same, how far back is the landmass? Hang on, let's let's find uh, everything now. Let's find a what you what you're asking me. Hang on. Do you want to know what sorry? Well, the ship, if the ship is at the horizon line, right, it, it, it's hitting the water That's and you... Most people, Rich, just walk right, okay, so, so you think that well, the horizon line there... But we could put Alan, in. Alan, pipe down, buddy. It's my turn. Right, well, from an elevation of 50 feet, what would the horizon be? How far would the horizon be? Can somebody just quickly check that for me? You mean using the curvature calculator? Yes, please. 
because this. I'm not, boat, asking, I'm not asking about the turbines anymore. I'm going back to the burning. Yeah, no. Well, what I'm seeing here is this is the perceived horizon. Yeah, this is this the waves that are here. Right. right? right. So this boat is above that. So essentially, what it's saying is that from an elevation of 50 feet, these this is the horizon line, which is probably what five and a half miles away. If the boat is six miles away and I'm at an elevation of 50 feet and this is the perceived horizon, right? This is what the Globers would say is that there's the horizon line um, and we needed... If, if they didn't have any reference points, they will say that, yeah. So, did you get that up for us, Arwin? Just, just while you're doing that, so to answer your question, Travis, the buildings are about 18 miles away, about say 10 extra miles far more than double the distance to the boat from ranty's position all right uh nathan you're answering my question in terms of the land mass that he was just showing so you're saying that the land mass is double the distance of the turbines uh not double the distance sorry double the distance more than of the boat the the boat's about seven okay. miles the turbines are about 10 miles the land mass is about 18 miles okay right i'll just i'll do it then because <laughs> uh, so because of that. the effect the closer you are to the looking at the distance of five miles you're going to see the horizon in a specific right. point the right. further you go you're going to see a different horizon and the further you go you're going to see a different horizon so that's about it right nathan am i still displaying you yeah yeah so right. so, right. so now we happened. have another so now we have another uh another uh catchy phrase there is no distance to the horizon well, there isn't, no. No, this is absolutely what not. Well, no, 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 technically. If we go 8.66 miles is the distance to the horizon judged in, judging by the Earth curve calculator for an elevation of 50 feet, right? So when we look at the footage, um, and we see, we know that this boat is only six miles, six and a half miles away, yet the horizon looks lower than that, so it should be closer. So that absolutely smashes any idea that the horizon is eight and a half miles away. Because if that's the case, the horizon should be up here. Essentially, where this um, inferior mirage starts. I mean, the horizon is just nonsense. It's an apparent position where the sky meets the ground. It's meaningless. Correct. If it's you were the to start roll... of the optical phenomena, basically, it's the start of where the miraging started. It's the start of the optical slant and all of that. But it is virtual it is only a visible phenomenon right Part it's not an actual so, thing it's not an actual point whereas if you're a globe head it is an actual thing it's the uh, leading edge no the the edge of the sphere that you're looking over that's what it is if you're a globe head the, despite the fact it changes with angle and changes yeah. with atmospheric conditions and you know things can seem to be higher than it because obviously if you're looking into the distance and the horizon is rising up to your eye level, the stuff that's further in the distance is going to be higher up than the stuff in the near foreground. And as you can see, that's what you get. You get a lower effect of this sea meeting the sky. And then there's the boat seemingly cresting above it. And there's the stuff going up and down with its inferior and uh, well, yeah inferior mirage on the turbines. Here we go. <laughs> there it is <laughs> you know what you want that line denotes the so stop uh, it right there randy okay so then you've got the yellow band right there before you've got the uh the ocean line so you've got the the white part of the of the um the turbine and then you've got the yellow so there's an aspect in which i would say perhaps right in the middle would be the hard line in reality because it's mirroring on itself so if Correct. you cut it in half right. then you can right. see it from the ship where the uh, under part basically yeah. stops becoming sharp and turns into the wave that's exactly that height there's actually sharp line in the two there's actually two lines to take from here one would be this is because the boat's nearer the inferior mirage is starting lower down on the boat because it's nearer so where my cursor is right now, where the, the mouth sort of like curls back on itself, that's where the inferior mirage starts on the boat. However, because the turbines are further away, their inferior mirage start higher up, you know, so where my cursor is now. And if I put that line across to here, it wouldn't match up on the sea truck. 
because now what about those two black so look at the top of the yellow band on the far left the three on the far left you've got that black spot on each of them and then they're both all mirrored yeah. below yes they are so yeah. this would be the perceived well basically this would be the perceived horizon that's it's crazy atmosphere going on and the further you go if you got another row of turbines the horizon will be perceived higher than that probably yeah, I mean, most probably. Well, the water is technically there, but you're seeing a reflection, basically. Well, so what you're seeing is where this, where my cursor is right now, right on this particular turbine, so lower than the midpoint, right? If there was no atmospherics going on, we would see the remainder of the turbine right down to the floor. But where my cursor is now, that's where the blockage starts. So all this is blockage. Anything that you're seeing beneath my cursor right now is blockage because that's just an inferior mirage creating a mirror that you cannot penetrate. You can't see through that. So anything that was, if there was a worker, let's say that, or, or there was a boat working on this turbine at the bottom here, and it was, let's say, 40 foot tall, or there's human there, six feet, you should be able to see, but you can't because the inferior mirage is causing the blockage. Well, it's not, it's the other way around. So the angular resolution at that angle is causing this to be stretched down and miraged. So in the case of your egg, you have exactly the same thing. At distance, you see a mirage of the egg. Then you start to see the bottom section of it stretch. Then eventually you see it disappear. So the same will apply to this. And you can see it in action. You can see literally the bottoms of the turbines closest to the sea truck disappearing before your eyes from bottom up along that line. And they are disappearing with perspective. The bottom's coming up towards the top in terms of the mirror image going up towards its counterpart, the actual image, the top section. But as Travis just pointed out, there is a line that runs right through the middle of them and it's higher than the line that the boat sits on. This is all in line with perspective. It's all in line with the viewing angle. That's what we're seeing. This is the diffraction limit of your camera. Significantly improved over the P900. That's why we can see this. This is awesome. No, it is really, really good footage, isn't it? It is. I think that's probably the moment I'm going to use to round out the show. So I'm going to say with that, first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the debating panel, especially Ranty, for making this debate possible. If you hated the show, then you know exactly what to do. If you liked it, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you have not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!